Hey guys, I want to take a minute to talk to everyone about the Pronounced Canine Trainers League. Uh, as a lot of you know, we, we hosted a, a competition this fall and we give away $25,000 in prize money. And um, uh, we're, we're going to do it again this year. The money's going to be even bigger. And I, I wanted to talk to everyone a little bit about what, why we're doing this, uh, what's, what's our reasoning behind it. And uh, there, there seems to be a lot of people asking about, you know, like, you know, where's the money coming from, you know, how, how's, how is this possible? And uh, that's why I wanted to make this video. I, I, I think that, um, that one of the, uh, the big problems with the dog sport today is that uh, we fail to recognize a lot of the opportunities that are out there. Uh, with, with, uh, with TV and reality TV shows being what they are today, uh, I believe it's, it's a shame that we don't have a presence anywhere in that. If you look at some of the dog training shows that are on television today, uh, in compared to the training levels that are out there in IPO, or Schutzen as I like to call it, um, I, I mean this is just something that doesn't make sense to me. I, I've been doing the dog sport for 37 years. I've been doing it at the same place for 20 years. And I'm continually meeting people who've never heard of this. Um, that, that are telling me this is something that I've always wanted to do. I just didn't know where to do it. I didn't even know this sport existed. And I think um, uh, that, that's, that's an opportunity uh, for us to take advantage of. I, I think that the dog sport can be so much more than what it is right now. Now, I get called a hater. <laughs> for saying these things all the time. It's like, oh, you just, you know, the dog sport's great, it's awesome, it, it, it you know, it, it's the best it's ever been. And uh, I've been around for a long time. There's only a handful of people that have been around longer than me. I've been doing this, this is coming up on 38 years for me. I am no rookie to this game. And I've seen very little overall growth. Matter of fact, I would say none in the whole time I've been doing this. I think one of the, John Mulligan, you had to be around a long time to know that name. He was one of our first USA judges, SV judge. Uh, he hosted a, a national event in the early 80s, and it was uh, one of the bigger events I've ever been to. As far as spectators go, um, it, it, there was a lot of people there. There were a lot of people watching it. The stands were full. I remember it being in the hotel room um, at night watching the trial on the local news channels. I remember the news trucks being there and filming it, and that's the last time I remember that happening. Um, that was in the early 80s. I remember thinking at that time that, wow, I got into this at the right time. This is going to take off and grow like crazy, and I'm in on the ground floor. And it's, it's not that much different. Um, today than it was then. It, it, it really isn't. And, and I mean, that's... Now, as far as the level of performance and the, the dogs and the training or what, yeah, it's outstanding now. Uh, it's never been higher. But again, you'd think that would increase the popularity of what we do. Now, um, the thinking behind the Trainers League is that we're looking at this like a lot of other professional sports. And we're thinking there's a lot of money being left on the table. We're thinking that somewhere out there, there's someone who's looking to make a TV show about what we're doing. Um, uh, there's, there's a producer out there. There's some guy that's looking for an event that he wants to televise. And we believe we have it. And that is the whole point of the Trainers League. That's the whole point of these money trials is we're using... The money trial to draw attention from sponsors. We're shopping this around to different television networks. And we believe there's an opportunity in the future to build this in, in, into something that um, can be greatly beneficial to everyone who does it. That, that we could be doing this in the future for lots of money. Lots of money. Um, all you have to do is look at some of the other models that are out there. There's the PBR, 
just the professional bull riders. I live in the country and I got a lot of cowboy friends and so this is something I know about. It's something I like to watch. I find it entertaining and, uh, and, and I followed it from the beginning and it has grown I mean to incredible levels. These guys are uh, these guys are millionaires now and they used to be just like us that they paid to go do it. That it cost them money to do it. They've got huge TV sponsors. They've got Ford, Wrangler, Budweiser. Uh, these guys are holding their national finals in Vegas for millions of dollars. Um, big TV deals. Crazy. Um, and I, again, I seen this sport, was watching this sport when it was local rodeos and it was really no bigger than what we do. Uh, another one is the UFC. Um, I've got some UFC fighters in my group. Um, I've got a lot of MMA guys in my group. And again, this is a sport that has grown in the last 20 years crazy. Now all these champions are millionaires, pay-per-views, big, uh, big audiences. They've revitalized the martial arts game all around the world. Gyms that you used to didn't see a karate studio or a boxing gym around here. They were, they were almost gone. And now, due to TV and this big competition that everybody knows about, and we all like to watch, um, <laughs> again, it's grown like crazy. If you go back, there's a show on, on, uh, that, on television that you can watch called A Fistful of Dollars, where Dana White, the founder of the UFC, is talking about when he wanted to start it, going into gyms and talking to fighters about it, and them not believing it was possible. That the very people that he's seen, that their abilities were worth money, didn't see it. They, they didn't believe it. And I feel that way in the dog sport. I think that there is a lot of opportunity for top level dog trainers that just has not been looked at. And we're wanting to look at it. A lot of people say, why, why me? Why am I the one doing it? And I would say the same thing. I'm probably not the best guy to do it, but I want to see it done and no one else is doing it. So we decided to take it upon ourselves to try to promote the dog sport, to try to make, um, to try to make what we do a lot bigger than what it is right now. We have a lot of things that those two organizations I mentioned don't have. Is one, to be an MMA fighter or to be a professional bull rider, you have to be a young man well, or a young woman. But uh, we don't have that. You can be young or you can be old and do this sport. This sport has a wider range of people that are capable of doing it than, uh, than, than those do. So that's an advantage to us. Um, what do we have that they that they have is we have an organized group of competitors around the world already doing this. We already have um, world championships. The problem is they're just not televised. Out of our own community, no one knows about it. Uh, sponsorships are not interested in it. People talk about, you know, our organization has talked about whether or not this should be done. Uh, what, what, whether, whether this is something that should even be, uh, um, be attempted because they're afraid that it will bring negative publicity. That they're afraid that we'll draw attention to ourselves from maybe uh, animal groups or whatever that could cause us problems. I would say that's already here. I mean if you look at Europe that's already happening. The only thing that's going to stop that from happening is money. Money through sponsorships, money through TV coverage. Um, I believe, that, I mean, this is the United States and we're capitalists. So I, I believe that anything worth doing is worth doing for money. I don't see how our top trainers being able to make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year by competing their dogs could possibly be a bad thing for our dog sport. 
I, I would like to have that explained to me how that could hurt. And you're talking about how you could take on these uh, these animals. There, there's, there's laws being passed right now about what we're going to be able to do in the future. Those laws have already been passed in Europe. And the dog training community had nothing to say about it. So whether or not we can use a prong collar or an electric collar, it, it's a damn shame that the top trainers in the world have no say in this issue. Because no one even knows they're there. And then they're afraid to speak up because, well, what if we draw attention to ourselves? We don't have the money to protect ourselves. Again, the only way you're going to change that, grow the sport, look for big corporate sponsors, big TV deals, reality shows, everything tied to dog training. Now, I've been doing this for, like I said, almost 38 years. Believe me, this will grab certain people's attention and hold it forever. Not everybody, but there is a certain percentage of the population that loves to watch a dog work at this level. And they don't even know we're here. So, something to think about. If you haven't checked it out, please do. The Pronounced Canine Trainers League. Um, join today.